Hello, hello. <gasps> Summer, come on. Summer. We'll have a guest star dog <laughs> again. <laughs> come in. How are you? Good. Go ahead and take off your shoes. Of course, this is an Asian house. I know. I, I know the rules. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, th thank you for having me in Seattle. Yes, so, I heard your first time. It's cold here. It is. It's cold, but I'm honestly not opposed to it. So You'll get used to it. Take your vitamin D. <laughs> I will. Are you ready for your 73 questions? Yes. And a lovely Christmas tree fitting for the season. Ready. Come on. So, let's go. Alrighty. So let's get started. What's your name? My name is Jenny. And you're People specialty. call me Dr. Lay. I'm a family medicine physician. And how many years have you been practicing? I've out of residency for three years now. Okay. And where did you go to undergrad? I went to UCSD. And medical school? Medical school at University, oh no, Pacific North, <laughs> what medical did I go to? <laughs> um, Pacific Northwest University. And residency? At Skagit. Okay. Did you take any gap years before going to med school? No, I did. Oh, actually I did. I took a um, gap year to finish my dance minor. Whoa. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, what was your favorite part of medical school, if you can remember? Favorite part of medical school was the people that I got to meet, the professors, the people, um, just some of my best friends that I know now. Common theme. Yeah. So was there a specialty you, you thought you wanted to go into on your first day? And I would love coffee. Okay. Um, so going into medical school, I always thought that I was going to be in some sort of surgical residency because I love art, I love working with my hands, and I thought that would be a good combination of both. But I didn't really understand what different specialties entailed. I just had this idealized world of what medicine would look like, and in reality, it looked totally different. And I realized that it didn't fit with my lifestyle. What changed your mind about surgery? Surgy, surgery. <laughs> Surgery changed my mind about surgery. I, as a med student, would go in at 4 a.m., scrub into all the cases, and then leave at 2 a.m., go to sleep, come back at 4 a.m. And it was just not conducive to my lifestyle that I wanted to have. And also, I found that I am a person of connection. Like, I want to connect with people. And I felt that during surgery, I was more connected to the science and the cases and the pathology, which is so cool. But at the same time, it wasn't the type of connection that I wanted. Well yeah. said. So were there any specialties you immediately said, absolutely not for me? I, I no, because as a family medicine physician, I love all the things. I hate feet. And I went to my podiatry <laughs> visit, like rotation and I was like, oh my God, I think I could do this because it was so awesome. And so I think in family medicine, you have like a little bit of ADHD and that like you love everything. And I didn't find anything that like I absolutely hated, even like wound care. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So what first made you fall in love with family medicine then? It's, um, so I did a rotation with my um, outpatient family medicine physician who is a DO and just, the relationships that he had with his patients and then the way that they confided in him in like all aspects of their life not just about their health and i found that it was just a, such a holistic way of dealing with the human body the soul the spirit that i really connected with and i didn't think that i can see medicine in any other way to compartmentalize put things in different boxes so yeah <laughs> I can't speak words right now. Carb <laughs> I didn't have enough coffee today. <laughs> yes, More coffee needed. It's yes. always the answer. So for those interested in pursuing family medicine, mm -hmm. how long does it take after med school? Three years of residency. And then you have the option to specialize in any other like palliative care, sports medicine, emergency medicine, um, gynecology, obstetrics. So there's lots of things that you can do afterwards. Oh, you stole my thunder. That was a question you were, I was going to ask later. Well, we can expand on it later. Yeah. So did you ever think about any other degrees like an MBA or an MPH, especially because it's only three years for family medicine residency? Mm -hmm. I was thinking um, more of doing like a subspecialty, but then, you know, I did it. 
because I want it to work. Life changes. <laughs> so what would you say is the most unique part of your specialty? That we get to see such a breadth of medicine. Like I get to deliver babies and then I get to work in hospice care. So I see such a wide range of people and experiences. And as much as I'm teaching people, they are also teaching and influencing me. That's such a beautiful answer. <laughs> Well, you know, that goes straight into the part that I love where I allow the physician to sell their specialty like a car salesman. Mm -hmm. So to the senior in high school or even first year med student, uh -huh. why should someone choose family medicine? It is the best specialty because you have great work-life balance. I am working two and a half days a week. I still get to do all the activities that I want to do. I still get to travel and I get to learn about all these different people and their lives. I get to do a bunch of procedures. Um, my life and my clinic is never boring. And so if you want good life, work life balance, if you want to get paid well, if you want to do things outside of medicine, then you should choose family medicine. That's what people don't realize. It's, it is one of the lifestyle specialties, I will yeah. say. So flip it around, devil's advocate. Uh -huh. Why should someone not choose family medicine? Oh. Um, there's a lot of bureaucracy in medicine, and so I have to deal a lot with insurance companies and people dictating how doctors should practice medicine. And I feel like you get that a lot with all different sorts of specialties, but a lot more so as a family medicine physician because we are not valued as much as the specialists. So say like, I wanna order an MRI because I see an abnormal physical exam finding, but my order would not be covered unless they go to like neuro or ortho or surgery and they order the MRI. Um, and so there's a lot of loopholes, loops that they make you jump through, extra work and paperwork that you have to do that doesn't improve patient care. Um, but we're actively trying to do things to improve that, you know, and working with a good company that values you as a physician is also very important. And I don't think that that is solely based on like family medicine. It's all throughout medicine. Very well said. Yeah. <clears throat> So, are there any stereotypes of your specialty? Um, I think a lot of people in family that, I think this is more of a med school and um, that people say that, you know, if you go into family medicine, it's because you couldn't get into any other specialty or that we just are referral people. You know, we just send referrals, but I think that that's not the case. Burnt out physicians definitely do in general. Like they do less, they try to do less. But if you are happy with your job, if you're happy with the people that you work with and your career choice, then you tend to do a lot more. Very well said. I was, the next question would be, are the stereotypes true? But it seems like they very much can be disproven. Yes. Like I, like people are very surprised when they come to see me as their primary doctor because I talk to them about so much during their preventative health visit. Like I'm pretty sure the last time you went to your doctor, you're all like, oh, I'm here for my physical. And they just order some labs and send you on your way. For me, I talk to you about like your lifestyle, your life goals. How do we get you to those goals? How do we find work-life balance? What are your passions? And what is it that's going to keep you happy, right? So that is your passions in life, a sense of community, and a sense of purpose. And we talk about all that during your wellness. And so I have this deeper connection with my patients that a lot of people don't really get to get. Ken, okay, very well said. <laughs> now, I throw this fun question in here because mm -hmm. I think it is a source of uh, good memories or trauma for any medical student uh, with any stage of medical training. Uh -huh. There is this thing called pimping, uh -huh. the on-the-spot testing of random medical knowledge. Yeah. So what is the craziest question you've ever been asked by an attending? The craziest thing that I've been asked is probably like, what, who played this music? <laughs> like we were in the OR and music was playing. I don't even know who it was, but they're like, name this artist or name this music. It had nothing to do with medicine. Uh, but they, they usually do things like that, and they're all like, oh, is this a cool resident or a cool med student or not? Um, it's always surgery, isn't it? Yes, it's only surgery. It's, it's no one else. 
Hi, Bubba. Well, hello. <laughs> this is London. You got a special guest. Mom, I found some toys at a ball upstairs. Oh, yeah, you did find some toys in a ball upstairs. <laughs> well, this is part of family medicine. Yeah. Part of family. He yeah. is actually a resident. He's my second, and he's actually a residency baby. Had him my third year of residency. Well, it's good to hear. I know there's always the question of can you have or can you start a family in residency? And I think family medicine is one of those that I think it's easier. I would say residency is hard in general. And if you wanted to start a family, you can. I was part of this Facebook group called uh, Dr. Milk, where it's a bunch of um, people who are breastfeeding during residency and as physicians. And there were like neurosurgeons on there, vascular surgeons, like all these other crazy, more hectic specialties. And they all still had babies in residency and were breastfeeding. It's just, you don't hear about it as often. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's good to hear a good example of it. Okay. You want to go upstairs? Okay. Oh, what does an average day look like for you? And I'm going to say the hospital, from the hospital. From the hospital. So I don't work in the hospital anymore. You have that option to work inpatient, but I have decided to no longer deliver babies just because babies come at random times and I don't want to wake up in the middle of the night. And then inpatient medicine, I have the option to continue inpatient medicine as well, especially during COVID. I decided not to do that as well. I had a lot of trauma with the start of the pandemic. And so now I'm just in the outpatient clinic two and a half days a week. Yeah. Sounds like a good deal. So how many patients do you see in an average day? So I have 30 minute patient appointment times and I would see at most about 15 patients a day. And you said yours is mostly outpatient now. Yes. So in general for family medicine physicians, is it mostly outpatient or inpatient or can you choose? Um, you can choose. So. A lot of my friends who have graduated from Skagit, they work in rural areas too. And so they would alternate between like working in clinic a few days and then working in the hospital or else they would also do like urgent care. So it just depends. Like you really have the option to do whatever the split you want. Some people do like all inpatient too. And that's, you know, that's their choice. Oh. So what's the most amount of patients you've ever seen in a day? As a family medicine physician, like over the last three years, like literally 16, maybe 18 at most. So yeah, it's been pretty chill. Oh man, <laughs> even more so a lifestyle specialty. It sounds great. <laughs> so what procedures, I know you mentioned a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but what procedures do you do slash can you do? Yes. So um, I wanted to go into a sports medicine fellowship originally. So when I rotated, I took two rotations with ortho. And after a few times of them teaching me injections and stuff, like he, the, he would literally go in and be like, oh, this is our injection specialist. And I would do all the injections for those like two months. And so I did a lot of knees, hips, um, uh, shoulders. shoulders what is it, greater trochanteric bursitis. Mm -hmm. We did a course with ultrasound guided. And then I also do IUDs, nexplanons, colposcopies. I do a lot of skin biopsies, um, both punch, shave, excisionals. And then I don't do scalp lax anymore because we, at Seattle Children's, we braid their hair, pro tip. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Yeah. That's, those are the main ones. Yeah. So a lot more than I think some people realize for mm -hmm. family medicine. Yeah. So what is the most common diagnoses or problems you see patients for? Honestly, it's more of the, so the bread and butter, obviously it's like hypertension, diabetes, heart failure, and things like that. But I see so many people for obesity medicine. Like I talk about nutrition, I talk about lifestyle, sustainable weight loss. How do we have longevity and how do we be independent for as long as possible? And so I talk a lot about those things. All important stuff. Now, I actually just came off of an ICU rotation with mm -hmm. um, someone who applied family medicine and she mm -hmm. had the desire to go critical access. So like uh -huh. 25 patient beds or 25 
yeah, patient bed hospitals uh -huh. like in total. So there's a lot of flexibility for family medicine to do both urban yes. as well as rural medicine. Yes. So if you could do it all over again, would you do urban or rural medicine? I probably would still do urban medicine. Like I, and it's totally different on the West Coast versus the East Coast. Because I was talking to some of the physicians who work on East Coast and they said that they there's a lot more specialty over there. So as family medicine physicians over there, you might not do as many procedures or things like that because they usually refer out. As compared to here, I find that a lot more of us are trained in procedural things. So I have a lot more variety in my clinic schedule and day. In terms of like, critical access and like that more intense like ER feel mm -hmm. um I I feel like I have enough anxiety in my own life that I don't need to add to the anxiety of like work you know I'm mm -hmm. someone who overanalyzes and I stress over every single decision that I make and to think that if I were to ever do something that I mess up, like I would not be able to mentally get over that for a long time. I understand that. Yeah. All right. I just want to throw that out there because it's something that even I didn't realize that mm -hmm. family medicine physicians can do. Like if you want to be the straight up only doc mm -hmm. in the city, family mm -hmm. medicine is really the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what is one thing people misunderstand about the field of family medicine? Um, I think that, um, I, I think I'm too far out of it for right now, but I think that in general, the society doesn't realize that there's so much that your family doctor can do. Like I talk so much about preventative care, you know, I talk about lifestyle and, um, you know, diet and exercise, people don't realize that you can go to your family doctor to talk about that. I also have a large female population and they didn't know that I can do pap smears for them. They're all like, should I see my OB or should I just see you? And I was like, well, if you have a baby, then yeah, go to your OB. But like mm -hmm. the rest of the stuff, like you can really talk to me about it. Yeah. yeah. All right. I got some quick fire lifestyle questions. Mm -hmm. So how many hours do you work in an average week? Mm -hmm. So in an average week, I would say I work about 25 hours. Not bad. Mm -hmm. So what time do you normally wake up? I wake up at 5.30. Oh, I wake up at, my alarm is at 4.46. <laughs> and, exactly. And yes, exactly. And I don't snooze. And then I um, go to the gym. And that's the reason why I am up so early. Okay. Yeah. What time do you normally leave the clinic? I, so I have a half clinic day on Tuesday and then I get in at 12 and then I leave by 5.30 on a regular full day. I either start at 9 or 9.30 and then leave around 6, 5.30 or 6. Okay. Yeah. How many hours of sleep are you typically working on? I try to get at least eight hours of sleep a night. So I go to sleep pretty early because I need that recovery. <laughs> How many hours of sleep are you working on right now? Right now, I went to bed around 11, and I woke up pretty late, so like seven. Not bad. Yeah. So do you have to take call? Yes, I'm actually on call right now. <laughs> uh oh. All right, yeah. let's, try, let's try to move things faster in case something happens. So, <laughs> and I know we mentioned this earlier, but any opportunity for further subspecializing, just kind of throw out some of the popular ones. Mm -hmm. So emergency medicine, um, obstetrics, um, palliative care, um, internal, like inpatient hospitalists, uh, sports medicine are just a few. Yeah. Okay. How long does it take you to chart at the end of your day? I try to finish the chart like before the patient leaves. Yeah, so like as my MA is rooming the next patient, I will try to finish the chart. There's special things now where like the, the mic can record you. So it will record your conversations with the patient and then they write everything out for you and then you just sign it at the end. Oh, technology is amazing. Yeah. Who were you most thankful for on your care team? Um, probably my MA, yeah, my MA and my nurse. Yeah, they yeah. make my life so much easier. What's the most common medical advice you give to your patients? My most common medical advice is that 
in terms of like, I talk a lot about like obesity medicine and weight loss. Everybody wants to lose weight. And I was like, okay, stop focusing on the lag goal. Look at your lead goals, which means that you're focusing too much on weight loss and you're not focusing on the things that lead to weight loss, which is consistently showing up every day. So practice doing those things and then the result will come when it comes. Very well said. So now we've talked a lot about your life inside the clinic. So how about your life in your clock house? So what is your favorite thing to do when you're not working? Oh my God, I'm so lame. Uh, I like to go to the gym. I like to work. Uh, yes. Oh, so do you have a significant other? Any kids? We saw a sneak peek at one. Yes, I am married. I got married in med school, third year, and then had two kids in residency. Awesome. Does your family ever ask you for random medical advice? All the time, but it's so annoying because they don't listen. I was like, why? Why do you ask my advice if you're just not going to listen? Like, just don't ask. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> What's the weirdest question a family or friend has ever asked you? Um, it's like, can you look at this rash? It's always the derm. It's always the Can derm you look stuff. at this rash? Can I take this medication? Can I stop my antibiotics early? <laughs> nope. Any pets? Well, I think we see one. Yeah. Here. Here, Summer. Hey. Hi, Summer, Summer, make a guess, guest appearance. Hi. <laughs> So we yeah. got the wonderful doggo. Uh, favorite animal, not a dog or cat? Um, turtle. Yeah. I haven't heard that one yet, I don't think. Yeah. Nice. If you could have dinner with anyone in history, who would it be? Cleopatra. And what would you guys be eating? Sushi. <laughs> Lovely. Well, what's your favorite dish to eat? <laughs> Sushi. Sushi. Yeah. Any favorite restaurants around here? Um, there are great sushi places around here. Um, we love limited edition sushi. It's an omakase place. Oh, I need, I need, uh, omakase ever since New York. Yeah. So what, uh, coffee, tea, or soda? Coffee. Yeah. Nice. All right. And, uh, if anybody's familiar with your socials, do, they should know that you are quite the weightlifter, somebody who could probably <laughs> throw me across the room right now. So what's your deadlift PR? So recently, um, I think 353 pounds, 160 kilos, yeah. Bench PR? Uh, 155 pounds. Squat PR? I did 297 in competition, but I think I can get 303. And your favorite lift? It's such a, I used to love deadlifts a lot, but we have a love-hate relationship now, so I was going to have to say the squat. Squat? Yeah. What's your go-to workout song? I, I listen to audiobooks when I, when I lift. What? Yes, I was, I just finished Iron Flame, okay, you know, if you listen to audiobooks, let me know, hit your girl up, because we need to talk about things. Yeah, so I just listen to Iron Flame. There's just no way you were lifting like or like podcasts or like yeah. You were lifting like two times people's PRs to audiobooks. What yeah. in the world? I, I'm like a different type of you know psycho. <laughs> well, hopefully we don't expose more psychopathic behavior. Pineapple on pizza? Yes or no? Pineapple on pizza. Yeah. Yeah. Comments are gonna have a good time with that one. Uh, favorite movie or TV show? I don't, um, I haven't watched anything for a long time. I'm into my audiobooks right now. I think the last thing I watched was like The Queen's Gamut. Okay. One random task you wish you could be better at? Uh, mm, inboxing? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. What's the best way that you relax after a long day? Listening to my audiobooks, yeah. Audiobook Rex in the comments. Yes, so, will do. Night in or go out in the town kind of person? It depends. Yeah, um, I would say night in. Okay. Yeah. Indoors or outdoors? Outdoors. Beach or mountains? Beach. Did you consider yourself more of an introvert or an extrovert? Introvert. Was that personality trait a factor in you choosing your specialty? No, because like, well, I guess maybe. Because, like, as a family medicine physician, like, you're just one-on-one, -on -one, but you're also dealing with a lot with families. I feel like I connect better in, like, smaller groups and spaces where you can have deeper 
conversations as compared to like really large groups where the conversations are more superficial. Like I don't, I don't know, I can't, I'm not as bright of a star. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for your time. As we wrap up, this is the time for the reflective questions. So first one, what did you think you were going to be when you grew up as a kid? I thought that, well, I wanted to be Britney Spears. I wanted to sing and I wanted to dance, um, but obviously that didn't pan out. <laughs> so instead so you chose to weightlift. Yeah, instead I chose to weightlift because I decided that, you know, being a stronger version of myself is better than being the smallest version of myself. Ooh, clip that. Is there a different specialty you think you could have done? Um, I think I could have done all of them. <laughs> That's why I chose family, family medicine. medicine. Yeah, because I, I do get to do a little bit of all of them. You know, I don't put people to sleep, but I, I do numb people up. For like and put lidocaine on them. <laughs> I do do injections that in ortho. You know, I do a lot of mental health. I do obesity medicine. I, I deliver babies, and then I talk people through um, hospice. So I I do all of it. Yeah. Damn. So if you didn't do medicine, what do you think you'd be doing right now? Right now, um, I think that I would do more like online health coaching, like maybe a life coach or, um, yeah, more so like life coach, nutrition, exercise, and mm -hmm. yeah. And now nobody can really go into medicine without knowing that this is a very difficult mm -hmm. and grueling path at yeah. times. So were there any times that you doubted that you would make it as a doctor? Yes all the time, even now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tough some days, um, but I find that the job is very fulfilling. It's, it fulfills a passion, it fills a, a void and a purpose. And so I, don't, I can't imagine myself doing anything else, um, but yeah. Uh, so if you could change one thing about the medical field right now, what would it be? politics, the government, and how they control how medicine is actually, how it actually works. Um, if we can have like a one-payer system, if patients can actually get affordable care um, that they deserve, and I can just do my job without talking to insurance companies, that would be great. I think many would agree with you. Mm -hmm. So what can a medical student do right now to prepare to go into your specialty? Um, work so the best family doctors or doctors in general are teachers and you need to learn how to listen and communicate well and so if you can practice your communication skills and, and speaking skills and just teaching something in general it's going to be really helpful in the future you pay thousands of dollars to learn really medical lingual and when you speak to patients it's it's not like that you know Patients remember how they feel, an emotion that you provoke. And so learning how to do that is going to make you a better doctor. If I could snap behind the camera, I would. So if you were to go back, would you change any of your experiences that got you to where you are right now? I would have taken more time off during residency. Like we are all so focused on finishing residency on time, but there's no such thing as on time, right? Your whole journey is this experience. And I went back to work when my first child was six weeks old. I started residency. And then I went back at eight weeks for my second child to finish up residency. And then I, you know, when I was finished with residency, it was a pandemic and we didn't do anything. And so I just wish I took more time off to experience that part of my life. But overall, like, I wouldn't change anything else. Time can't be bought back at exactly. all. And so finally, question 73. What would you say to the aspiring family medicine physician right now? Trust the process. Trust in yourself. And you got where you are because someone believed in you. You just have to believe in yourself, too. Very, very <laughs> well said. Well, that's all I got for you today. 
Thank you so much for all your advice, and um, hopefully people get to realize how awesome family medicine is. I've really enjoyed my family medicine rotations too. So. Yeah, we're the best and the yeah. coolest. <laughs>